Hi, this is Jim Ross, Spokane Community College, with a brief presentation on uh, how knowledge grows. And this really fits under a larger uh, subject called information literacy. Uh, and uh, we all need to be more information literate today. In fact, it's not so much um, um, uh, a luxury but a requirement for survival. Uh, and understanding what's here on this screen is a pretty good way to improve information literacy give us a sense for what uh, what kinds of things we need to be concerned about okay now when we talk about information literacy in general we're really talking about doing research we're talking about finding answers finding information that we can trust so research is more than just sitting in a laboratory with a white coat and and uh, doing experiments it's more than sitting in the back of the library uh, covered in books uh, trying to find information research now is any uh, any place you go and any technique you, you use to find answers. Uh, and the question is, where do you go to look? And how do you know when you find something you can trust it? Okay? Now, to understand this freshness date, uh, come on down here and you'll see a very uh, poor uh, drawn picture of uh, four, uh, actually a boat at four different times uh, in the past. Here we have, so pretend we're looking from the sky down and here it, we're seeing this bo boat, the top of the boat in the year 2000. Now here it is four years later, same boat four more years and the same boat just uh, just recently. Uh, and this boat is uh, is really, let's call it the boat of knowledge. And the boat is moving from left to right into the future. Okay, so here's the point of this boat. Uh, here we have uh, all that we knew uh, when we were what, 12 years ago, okay? And the boat leaves this wake, and here is the wake 12 years ago. So everything in the wake, I want you to imagine, that's all the information that we have that had access to 12 years ago to find information we could trust to get our answers, right? Now, if you move the boat ahead four more years, look how, how large that wake is now, okay? So not only did we have all of this that we could uh, uh, search, but now we had this new information too. Now if you continue to almost today, look at how huge the wake is. Look how much look at how much information is available. Uh, and notice that the wake now goes all the way up past the top of the screen and goes all the way down uh, down below uh, where it's out of sight. And as you can imagine, as this boat continues into the future, uh, the pool or the wake of information uh, is going to grow larger and larger and larger. Uh, and so knowledge is really accelerating as we speak. Uh, it's doubling every four to five years. Uh, and so it really isn't um, uh, at a pace anymore that colleges can keep revamping curriculum that easily. Certainly, uh, uh, you know, people uh, really can't afford to buy the latest equipment uh, to teach or to learn because what's the saying? If you can buy it, it's obsolete. And so the question is then, so how do we survive when knowledge is exploding? if we can't turn to those traditional structures uh, to learn. Um, and the answer is the single most important skill you can take with you is to know how to teach yourself. It's that simple. To be able to rely on yourself to find the information you need, to evaluate it, to make sure it's trustworthy uh, before you make decisions on it. Okay, so, so let's talk about this right here, these three circles of knowledge. Um, when you talk about looking for information, when you talk about exploring this wake, uh, you can re represent it with, with, with in three different areas. You have books, uh, something called periodicals, and then what uh, I call the invisible college. Okay, and what we're looking for when we find information, we're looking for two things. First of all, um, we're looking for something called, see it right here, freshness date. Uh, and the freshness date really works just like um, uh, the expiration date on a carton of milk uh, at a grocery store. Uh, the date tells us that if we use the milk up to that date, we can trust it. But after that date, maybe not. And information has the same value. It has a freshman, freshness date. There's a date beyond which the information's too old. Uh, and perhaps we shouldn't trust it. And we as researchers, as students, um, uh, we have to decide what is the oldest freshness date we'll accept. And of course, that's going to depend on the topic. If it's an historical subject we're working with, then the freshness date may go way, way back here. Everything is still fresh. If it's something to do with, say, a new treatment uh, in medicine, then the freshness date might be only a month old. Okay, And then after a month, the information uh, probably shouldn't be trusted.
The other thing we need to look at is something called credibility. In other words, once we find the information, how do we know we can trust that information uh, to make decisions, to uh, form into papers, uh, essays, uh, to present to on the job for some sort of uh, project or feasibility study and the like. We need to know how do we evaluate credibility. Uh, and so it's pretty simple now. When we get to these three, circle of knowledge, three circles of knowledge, um, let's take a look and we'll see where we find the information and how we can weigh the freshness date and this credibility uh, at the same time. Uh, typically, when folks look for information, they think of books first because we're fondest, I think, of books. Maybe not so much anymore, but certainly uh, in the past, uh, we were told if you need to know about this topic, go check out a book on it. Uh, and books are still comfortable. We probably checked them out when we were uh, uh, in elementary school. Uh, and books are still useful, but the thing to keep in mind is that the freshness date of books, uh, really you need to question, and here's why. To find out where, and again, if we, if we, if we go down here to um, uh, our boats, to find out you know, when the information in a book was new, here's what you do. Okay? You take uh, the copyright date of the book, subtract a year, and that's when the information was fresh. So what that means is that if you find a book with, say, a 2011 copyright date, that sounds very, very fresh. But that's information we actually knew in 2010. Uh, and that may be too old to use to, to, to make, uh, you know, to base a good decision on, depending on the topic. Uh, the good news about books, though, is that books typically uh, are credible. They're much more credible uh, than sometimes other sources of information. And the reason is that books that are published by legitimate uh, publishing companies, typically the information in them has been checked. They've stood the test of time. And so what you get in books is credibility. What you give up is freshness. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now when we go uh, to the second circle of knowledge, we talk about something called a periodical. Uh, and periodicals uh, is just a big name for uh, stuff that's published periodically. For example, magazines uh, may have a period of one week between issues like Time Magazine or one month between issues like uh, Popular Science. Uh, newspapers are also published in, in, in intervals. Uh, typically, the period is, what, one day? Uh, journals are um, actually kind of magazines, and you certainly will learn to live in journals as you move uh, through school into your uh, major field. Uh, best for now to think of journals are magazines that are full of articles written by experts in a field for experts in a field. Okay, So they're written by experts for experts, and you will become an expert as you learn more about the field uh, that you choose to study. Okay, uh, And so magazines, newspapers, and journals, then, those are the three categories of periodicals. Now, we can get to books using the electronic card catalog. Uh, type in the name of the subject, click search, and it'll, the library will show us what books it has. Uh, but periodicals are much, much, much more wide-ranging. Um, uh, the database that uh, um, I'm most familiar with in terms of searching for articles in magazines and newspapers and the like is ProQuest. Uh, and ProQuest is huge. It's really magnificent in terms of the breadth of information it can show us. Uh, and uh, I, I suggest if you don't know how to navigate a database, that you practice. The good news is if you learn how to find your way in ProQuest, for example, you can pretty well find your way in most any database because they all work the same way. You type uh, something in a white search strip, click search, and, and hope that uh, you find what you want to find. Okay. Uh, and so the periodicals are valuable, uh, valuable forgive me, because um, they tend to be fresher. In other words, imagine who would buy a newspaper that's a week old, right? So the newspaper has an obligation to have fresh information for its reader the next day, whether it's uh, a paper newspaper or an online newspaper. Otherwise, the readership won't read, right? And so the freshness state of periodicals, then, can be much, much, much better, much, much more recent than books. But what we give up, really, uh, in a little bit of us, uh, occasionally, is credibility. Because the information in magazines and newspapers uh, uh, sometimes it's just preliminary. Uh, sometimes it needs more research, more study. But again, if we're looking for a better freshness date, uh, periodicals are certainly a great place to start. Now, if you're wondering, well, what happens to all the information and all of these articles uh, after the next issue comes out? Well, it's pretty simple. 
what happens is that once um, uh, these uh, you know current issues are are in the past, or rather at, when these current issues come out, folks that uh, write books or update books or um, you know refresh uh, and addition of book books, they will basically incorporate. Uh, the information that we is reported discovered in these periodicals into the new editions of books or new books. Okay, so it washes back uh, as time goes on. So that's periodicals. A better freshness state. Maybe we're giving up a bit in credibility. Okay. Uh, the most exciting circle is the invisible college, and the reason I call it this is we really can't see it. Uh, we can't we can't access it very easily. Right now, as I'm uh, doing this recording. Um, new things are being discovered all over the world in science, technology, um, engineering, history, archaeology. Uh, people are discovering new things right now that you and I don't know about and really can't know about unless we're there with them. Okay? Uh, and so that's why it's exciting. So the freshness state of the Invisible College is not a problem at all. It's what we learn today. But the problem can be credibility, and we've all heard warnings about the Internet. Um, and, and how to uh, make sure that the websites that we uh, uh, use are credible. What I recommend you do, uh, if you find this uh, uh, presentation in a folder, look for the uh, presentation on how to do a Google domain search. And if you like Google, uh, doing a domain search where you can single out just uh, colleges and universities is really a valuable skill. Simple to use. Uh, it'll get rid of all of the uh, commercial uh, site that uh, that Google typically pops up. Okay, so back to this. We can access the in the Invisible College, though. We don't have to sit and wait for it to be in a periodical the next week or the next month. Uh, we can make site visits. We can actually go and visit a place to see what we're interested in researching, see it being done. We can interview people. We can do surveys, find out what folks um, uh, sitting next to us think uh, or want. Uh, the internet certainly as well, but again, you've got to be careful because uh, you can put anything you want on an internet uh, site and uh, you'll find some pe people who believe it. So um, the freshness state of the Invisible College is, is really, really good. Uh, however, the credibility of the Invisible College you really have to be careful of. Uh, and so what happens is uh, this uh, information that's being discovered today, uh, it spills back into periodicals typically, and it also will spill back into books uh, as uh, these are reported in uh, perhaps um, uh, presentations and uh, conferences as well as uh, uh, you know, researchers send articles to particular journals uh, right here that uh, uh, publish information uh, based on their field. And so that's really how knowledge grows. Uh, we have books that are uh, credible typically, but freshness date is a question. We have periodicals, which are a pretty good balance in between if you go to a legitimate database like ProQuest. Uh, and then we have the Invisible College, which um, you will be involved in likely. If you're going to discover new things, this is where you're going to live your lives and, and, uh, and you're going to discover things that push back uh, and become part of this big, huge wake. Uh, that will um, actually be washing back into the future. So uh, I hope this has helped, uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, you understand now what you need to look for when uh, you're doing research. You have to decide how old will you uh, allow the information to be, and once you find the information, can you trust the source?